Well, good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. I am Matt Watson, and this is SCDI, and I lead schools eye on the valley. It's a little wet outside. You might want to, uh, you know, just take it easy this morning if you can stay home. St- you know what? Pour yourself a cup of coffee. Stay home for a couple hours. Listen to a great show here on KHTS. If you do have to drive, uh, give yourself a little extra time. It's a little wet out there, and, and, you know, if you didn't, if it's already too late for yourself to, to give yourself a little extra time, well, then just uh, let folks know you're going to be late, because cause it ain't worth rushing around out there. It's slick. Anyways, like I said, we are Eye on the Valley. We're brought to you by SCDI and I Lead Schools, a network of charter schools with campuses in Castaic, Agua Lancaster. We've got a fully accredited online school, a burgeoning homeschool program called I Lead Exploration. You know what, why don't you just go over to iLeadSchools.org, check, check us out, and uh, you can get more information on our classroom-based charters, our virtual charters, our homeschool, and we've got something for every type of learner out there. So, uh, so yeah, we keep our eye on education here in Santa Clarita and across the nation as well, but like the show says, we keep our eye on the valley too, bringing you everything that you need to know about what's what here in the valley. And we try to do it while bringing a smile to your face, because that's just, that's the way you slide into a weekend, right? A little grinning, a little smiling. It's Friday. Keep your chin up. And and boy, are you in for a treat today. We've got a fantastic show for you. You're going to be, well, you're going to be informed, entertained, inspired. You're probably going to cry a little bit, laugh a lot, maybe even cry from laughing. Who knows? That's a good thing, right? In just a moment, I'm going to be joined by Soraya Martinez from the Santa Clarita Public Library. Uh, and you know, you do not know all the stuff that our library has to offer, so you're going to want to hear this. And uh, a little bit later on, we're going to be talking to Dr. Jasmine Rise from COC. She's doing some amazing stuff to continue to educate those in our valley. And then uh, in hour number two, I've got a real special treat for you. I'll introduce you to an amazing young poet, Nadia Canche. She's got a brand new poem that she's going to share with you that will, it's just going to absolutely buckle your knees because, you know, first time I heard this poem, I thought, oh, wow, that is just such a warm, poignant, and then bam, it just nails you right in the heart. It's it's an incredible poem. She's going to share that with you in hour number two. And then, yes, I know, I've got... I've got a couple of fans of Big T, one of them sitting right across the counter from me. Uh, So yeah, Big T's back. You know, mom won't let me do any show that he's not part of. I'm not allowed to have nice things of my own, so So, yeah, Big T will be here. So let's go ahead and get to it. As I said, my first guest is the senior librarian with the Santa Clarita Public Library, bilingual in English and Espanol. Soraya Martinez received her BA in Spanish language and literature and oh oh hey check it out did I you see my Cervantes shirt? yeah I did. check it out she got a BA in Spanish language and literature and Chicano studies from UC Riverside and her masters in management library and information science from USC I know engineer Andrews a big SC fan but all right, we'll allow it this morning. <laughs> we'll allow it this morning. The consummate leader, Soraya, was active on both campuses she attended, and her activism and advocacy led to a position as a community organizer in Denver, Colorado, before settling into her true passion among the stacks. Soraya held several library positions in Durango, Colorado, before uh, they call it Durango, right? Not yeah. Durango. Uh, yeah, and a little bit yeah, further south yes. there's a Durango, but Durango, <laughs> Colorado, before returning to beautiful Southern California, or at least what she thought was beautiful Southern California. (laughs) She was told there would be no winter storms. But uh, she came back and joined us in 2019, where she hooked up with the Santa Clarita Public Library and quickly became senior librarian. So, Aida, welcome back to Eye in the Valley. Thank you so much for having me. I think this is your second time here. You were here about a year, year and a half ago. Yeah, Probably talking about the same thing. (laughs) Well, uh, about all the amazing things going on at the library. (laughs) So first off, tell us a little bit about your journey um, from student to activist and and, and now to to senior librarian. Um, You went to school here in SoCal. Were you born here as well? 
I was, yeah. So I uh, was born and raised in Los Angeles. I lived there for 18 years until I moved to Riverside right. to get my undergrad. I was in Riverside uh, for a couple of years. Uh, while I was doing that, I became very involved with Mecha, the Mecha yeah. organization. I know Mecha well, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I was involved with them and did a lot of community organizing. I did, I planned events with them. I did so much at the school that I wanted to continue doing activism. And I found um, a couple of internships with an organization uh, that brought me to conservation and conservation issues and okay. how that affects mostly Latinos um, in underserved areas. So it brought me to a job in Colorado. And I went out All there right. and what I was out there for four years, almost four years, um, with my then boyfriend, who's now my husband. Oh. So we moved out there and we definitely enjoyed the mountains. We enjoyed the snow. Um, as I did that too, though, I, I was always passionate about doing something different as well. So I landed in a school library in, in Durango, Colorado, and it was small. I was thrown into the library. It was like, here's your budget. Here's your library. You manage all this. And I was like, what? So <laughs> <laughs> a year in, I really loved it. Then I decided to get my master's in, in library science. And I did okay. that all online while going to school full time, work full time. So it was it was crazy for two years. Then uh -huh. our families, both my husband's and I, are here in California. So we're like, we need to move back. We need to go back yeah. to family. So um, after I finished my master's, we were looking for jobs. And I found a job here with the city of Santa Clarita. And okay. it was a perfect fit. And I applied, got the job, and we moved back. And here we are. Fantastic. So you kind of... You kind of fell into the field of library sciences, yes. and then and then got your masters, and and your career really took off. Um, so, what was it that uh, once you started working at that uh, that little library in Colorado? What was it that uh, that really rung your bell, really called your attention? I think it was just providing resources to to the kids. Um, it wasn't just the kids, it was the teachers too. So mm. providing the resources that they needed, giving them information, you know, looking up different topics for them and making sure they got a broad range of information, not just the first thing they Googled. So <laughs> it's it's always just going deeper, finding like the root of what they needed. I think that really called me and I really wanted to help out more. Mm -hmm. So I was always looking to helping out like a greater community, sure. which it, it was just a school, it was just the kids, but it, it was lovely, and I think it made me realize that I wanted to do more with it. Well, yeah, and, and you're an activist at heart, and yes. the most radical form of activism is education. Yes. So, <laughs> so that seems to be a natural fit. I love it. Okay, so as senior librarian, what is your job? Do you work out of a specific branch? What are your responsibilities? What do you do? So I'm senior librarian for adult services and marketing. Okay. So I oversee the adult services in all three libraries. All right. So I am based out of the New Hall Library, but I technically go to all of them and just make sure that the adult librarians and the adult assistants are keeping up to date with in new programs, new crafts, new things that we are we can innovate as well. Um, and I just make sure that we are still staying like active with the community so part of it is also making sure that we're doing outreach with the senior centers community mm. centers um anything that we can make connections with community organizations and partnerships and stuff like that so we're always looking for partnerships and always looking to see who out there wants to come to the library and do a program so bringing in guest speakers too uh okay. we've brought in um, yoga instructors we've brought oh, in wow. um, people to show others how to cook and how to bake or make mocktails so we have a <laughs> variety of, of programs that we've had in the past almost two years since we've been reopened uh, and it's it's really great. And as far as marketing, just making sure that people get the word of what is happening at the libraries, what is going on. Like not just it's not just books. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. We have tons of stuff, uh, programs, databases, online resources, and it's not just for kids. So everyone thinks libraries are mostly for kids. Sure. No, we are open for all ages. Um, we have a really cool program going on um, by my senior counterpart um, for youth services. She's doing the homeschool program, uh, just mm -hmm. getting that initiative going, trying to provide way more resources for the homeschool community as well. So it's just all of these things that we're trying to do for the entire community. That is fantastic. You know, we're a school organization, mm -hmm. and uh, gosh, I think it's over half of our students are enrolled in a homeschool program. So maybe we'll talk about that in, in, yeah. in just a little bit. And I do want to get into all these different services, because you're right, I don't think 
a, as much outreach as y'all do. You're really active on social media. <laughs> you do a great job getting out in the, the community. Y'all are just doing so much in mm -hmm. so many different areas. I don't think our community fully understands everything that y'all have to offer. Now, you hit you hit a really soft spot <laughs> for me. You mentioned that you guys partner with the, the Senior Center. Yes. That's an do. organization that I absolutely fell in love with several years back. What is it that y'all do in partnership with the Senior Center? So we do different Senior Centers. We go to um, probably about like five senior centers mm -hmm. across the entire community. We provide book clubs for them. We provide okay. books that we just bring to them. They have them for a month. They can read them. Uh, we go back, bring them new books, and then we take the older ones back. Uh, we do crafts with them too, oh. so we make sure we bring crafts for them. And we're also trying to do tech hour for them to try to teach them about different technology nice. <laughs> and different applications. So we, we try to keep up to date with the seniors as well, trying to get them to learn something new, trying to like teach them how to use their phones or their tablets because sometimes they don't know how to use that. So it's always great that our librarians are going into these places and bringing the programs to them instead of them just coming to us. Perfect. So, mm -hmm. you, so you're bringing the library to the senior yes. center. <laughs> you, you're, you're getting them on TikTok and, and doing all kinds of fun stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, is, videos and all that. Yeah, yes. <laughs> fantastic. I, I love that. Um, so uh, you guys are in the midst of, of one of your year's uh, kind of biggest programs. Um, uh, and so I want to talk about that. It's called One Story, One City, right? Can, yes. Can you tell us about what that is and how it's going? Yeah, so One Story, One City, this is our eighth year doing this. Uh, it's eighth our, year. yeah, eighth year. And it's a, a program that we have the entire month of March. It's dedicated to one specific book. We do programs around it, uh, we do book discussions. So it's mm -hmm. our One Story, One City goal is to bring the community together, talk about the book that we have selected, uh, come to our programs, create a discussion for them to talk about the different things that we talk about. So every year we pick a different book. And it just depends what, like, uh, sometimes we try to, like, do a, a book depending on, like, what's going on with current events. The last two okay, years we Try to we pick did, something relevant. All yes, right. trying to pick something relevant or trying to pick something fun for them, too, so All that right. we can, like, base our programming around it. Um, two years ago, we did Eat Joy, which was a book uh, uh -huh. about, like, you know, baking and people were stuck at home. And yeah, So trying yeah. to, like, get them to think about different things. Great about idea, yeah. Last year, it was the Nature Fix, which was getting people outside. So we did a lot of that program, too. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Get, as we were getting back outside yes, and, uh -huh. and you hosted all kinds of events, you we hosted did. community hikes and, we did. and, and <laughs> things like that. So it, it's kind of like the world's biggest book club, right? It you, is. Everybody <laughs> the in, the, in the community can yes. get, uh, <laughs> get involved. And mm -hmm. so what book have you chosen this year? So this year we have chosen Remarkably Bright Creatures by uh -huh. Shelby Van Pelt. Okay. And it's uh, a book that uh, it discusses so many various topics. Um, it goes into uh, talking about friendship and family and losing people and trying to get through all of that while also trying to still keep your your sanity and trying like it's all seen through like the mm. eyes of an octopus yeah you know, miss marcellus um i don't want to give more away in case you yeah, haven't read the book right because you but gotta yeah. yeah like it's a really great way to read the book we have it available in ebook um audiobook we have physical copies. We do have programs, and we are giving the books away for free at some of these programs. So get if people out. show up, they will get a, a copy. We do have limited amounts, so it just depends what program it is. Um, but do try to come out to these events. Uh, we did start on March 1st with a community cleanup, so people can go to the libraries and get a pail to like clean up around their community, send us pictures, and we can post it. Uh, we are also doing an Agents of Discovery, which is also going out, doing a like puzzles and stuff like that around the community to just get outside, get some clues, solve them, and get prizes at the end of it when you come into the library and tell us you finished the, the Agents of Discovery program. Um, okay. It's an app, so people can download the application. And this is a family thing, so people can do it with their families. Okay. So One Story, One City is mostly like adult programs, mm -hmm. um, but we do have some family events. We had a family event last week on Saturday, which was sure. the Traveling Aquarium, and oh, it was cool. amazing. People showed up. They were excited. Uh, we had limited space, and unfortunately, we couldn't 
ticket and everyone that came in but uh -huh. it was a really fun event that we're like well people really like the aquarium so we're thinking about bringing them in the future well, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah definitely so um gosh i've got so many follow-up questions yes um <laughs> so i'm guessing that if you had you had so many people come for the aquarium event did you like survey the crowd? Did you did you try to find out how many of them are actually reading the book with you? Or we didn't. A lot okay. of them were with like their kids and sure. family, so we weren't really like asking them if they have like read the book or if they were going okay. to read it. Um, but that is a good point for next time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just curious because some of the events that you're doing it, it are just so fun, so engaging, so exciting. Like you said, for the whole family, mm -hmm. not necessary to be reading the book it, to to participate yeah. in the events. But it just really it ties all the different experiences that y'all are providing in to this this central thing and brings the community together. Yeah. I love that. Um, and so, gosh, it's I while you were talking, <laughs> I looked up the book on Amazon. Uh -huh. um, so folks can obviously buy the book and and, mm -hmm. and read along. Um, but you said you're giving away books at some we of the are. different events. You've mm -hmm. got the the. Uh, the ebook uh, available for e free, available. Mm -hmm. so so it's accessible to yes. everyone, to anyone. Yes. Um, I just wanted to read because this yes. book just hooks you from the very first line. Uh, <laughs> check this out. It says, "Day one thousand two hundred ninety nine of my captivity. Darkness suits me. Each evening I await the click of the overhead lights, leaving only the glow from the main tank. Not perfect, but close enough." Gosh, I, I'm, I'm in. I'm buying the book <laughs> this weekend and and can't wait. But um, so when did you start the program? When did y'all start reading the book? So we have a committee that selects the book or selects, we select a range of books. Uh -huh. And then we present this to the library community forum, which then it's, it's a comprised of people around the community from different organizations. We present them like a few titles that we have like narrowed down to. Mm -hmm. They give us their top two choices um, as a whole and then we from there select what kind of book we want. Okay. And so we will go based on whatever was more popular, whatever people are reading the most. And actually this is a national bestseller as of like yeah. last year. It's a new book. It's sh She's a brand new author too. Uh -huh. So it's really interesting to see how like how much there is a talk about around this book in the past year. Mm -hmm. So um, it just depends on, on, like I said, the book and the yeah. committee and what they bring forward and what we can provide to the community, what topics we can talk about, uh, what can we like get the community to have conversations in. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on the book. But we start, our process starts, oh my gosh, I want to say like in September as a committee and we start like, we read books and then we bring whatever we think will be great for this discussion sure. forward and then we kind of narrow it down by october we try to select one book uh -huh. and then that's when we start planning our program so we start planning like months it's in like advance. a whole year event almost <laughs> gosh yeah. so if folks are just hearing about this now are they like too far behind or can they grab they the book not. this weekend and jump in you okay. can jump in at any time Fantastic. so we have programs still happening from now to the end of march we do All have right. book discussions that people can come into the libraries and have the discussions you don't need to be finished with the book to come to the book discussions All right. if you're like one third of the way in or halfway in and you just want to come and talk about it uh -huh. just know that you can come in um we do have the, an author conversation so we're gonna be on oh. live with um shelby van pelt wow yeah so we're gonna be on on facebook live so it's gonna be a virtual interview okay and that's on march 31st march so 31st the first, last the day, yes. Perfect. What a People great have idea. time to read the yeah. book from now till then. So you've got the whole month to read the book, and yes. then you can zoom in with the Santa Clarita Public Library and mm -hmm. and and join in that conversation with the with the author of mm -hmm. what is extremely current, one of the newest, yes. hottest uh, books Titles. out there. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, it sounds so exciting. So Adam Martinez, senior librarian with the Santa Clarita Public Library. I know you've got a lot more events <laughs> and services to offer. You mentioned a few of them before. Mm -hmm. Uh, to offer not just for kids, for well, for All kids ages. from one to a hundred, yeah. basically uh, across the valley, including things folks would would never even think to go to their their public library for. Let's talk about that right after this. Yeah. We do have to break for a quick commercial. I'm Matt Watson. You're listening to SCBI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. If you welcome back, you're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 12:20 AM. This is Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. I'm joined this morning by 
senior adult librarian with the Santa Clarita Public Library, Soraida Martinez. Uh, Soraida, before the break, we were talking about One Story, One City. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that this is uh, the book, uh, Remarkably Bright Creatures, um, that the entire city is reading right now. Everybody's reading it. If you're not <laughs> reading it, you're being left out, but it's not too late. Pick up a copy or go to the, the library's website, and, and you can download an e-copy and, and start reading there. They've got all kinds of amazing events attached to that culminating on March 31st with a conversation with the author yes. via Zoom. Now, we were talking at the break. Um, uh, so it's, it's via Zoom, so folks can, can stay at home and, and, and just Zoom in. But you also mentioned you're bringing the community together for this. Yeah, so it's actually Facebook Live. Okay. So um, they can watch it on our Facebook page. Uh -huh. So they don't have to log into Zoom or anything. Just log into Facebook.com slash SCV Public Library. Perfect. And you can watch it on there. Um, it's It'll be really cool if, if people don't want to watch it on Facebook or they don't have a Facebook or anything like that. Or, or they just want to come in and actually be watching this uh, live broadcasting. And they can come into yeah, yeah, connect with the community. They can come to the Old Town New Hall branch and they can watch it uh, at like at the library. Mm -hmm. Basically just have we'll have the screen up and we'll have the computer going and we'll try to get questions from the audience so that we can ask the oh, author. Cool. So we're gonna try right. to do that. Um see how much time we have because we do already have tons of questions for her. Oh, so right. we're gonna see how the hour goes. Sure. But um we are super excited. We will still have books available for people that show up to that. And um, catch up and we have cool. goodie bags too for people. So we do have goodie giveaways. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so for all of the programs that we are having, we're giving away some some sort of giveaway oh wow yeah. uh -huh. Th that's amazing okay so very cool so you can tune into on facebook live yep. from home or you can go to the watch party at the new yes, Hall public at the library, new Hall library. Uh, yeah. that'll be awesome now amazing event i love that you guys do this every year but y'all have a lot more going on <laughs> these days and, and and year round so let's talk about some of the things you've got coming up i yeah. think next month um Gosh, <laughs> you don't slow down. You come we right out ever. of One Story, One City <laughs> and go straight into Teen Fan Fest. What is Teen Fan Fest? So Teen Fan Fest, this is um, th our third time doing it. Last year it was a little bit smaller, but we're trying to go all out this year um, and just kind of grow it and make it bigger every single year. Uh, so this is a program put on by the teen librarians, the teen assistants, and, mm -hmm. and the senior librarian for youth services. Um, and it's a Teen Fan Fest is basically – a mini comic con so it's just something oh, cool. like giving people giving teens the space to come in and dress up play video games like learn about new things talk about comic books um anything like that like anything you can think about comic con it will be in miniature ish at the canyon country community center from six to eight on friday april 7th okay very cool so mm -hmm. parents you don't have to drive your kids down to long beach or san diego no. <laughs> to go to an amazing convention where they can can get involved in all kinds of yeah. fun activities. Very cool. And then n following month, like, like I said, you don't slow down. It seems <laughs> like you're constantly down. ramping up. Yeah. Um, May, you've got a celebration that actually I think started in Latin America and, and moved uh, moved north called Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros. Yes. Um, what's that uh, and, and how are you all celebrating? So that is a program that we do basically to celebrate kids. We do book giveaways to all the kids that come in, they get to select books that they want to take home, get them completely for free. But we also provide crafts. We provide, uh, we have a special person, a presenter coming in to mm -hmm. show kids how to illustrate. Um, so they're going to be coming in. This person uh, has okay. won an honorable mention for with my monolingual friends. <laughs> <laughs> this one's for kids. It's Dia de los, de los Niños, yeah. uh, Day of the day Kid. Of the child, yes, yeah. Day of the Child, yeah. Day of the Kid, Day of the Child, Day of the Book. There you so go. So it's basically a program where they can come in, families come in. Um, we're going to have a, um illustrator come in. The illustrator just recently won the honorable mention for um, the Pura Verple, Pura Verple Awards, uh -huh. which is a big thing in, like, the kids' literature. Yeah. So, um she will be here to do a live like presentation illustration uh we're gonna have book giveaways we're gonna have i think sammy clarita will be there we're gonna have uh Esteban de Crayon mascot, on there. yes yeah. the city mascot um we're gonna have music we're gonna have you no know, tons of things uh it, last year we had snacks and a place outside for them to play so it's in may so it's it's a little bit better weather so <laughs> it'll be great to be outside in, the, in at the canyon country community center 
wow, gosh, y'all are doing so much. <laughs> You're giving so much stuff away. Got so many exciting events. It mm-hmm. seems like every month you're doing something new, something different. Uh, so either you just blow my <laughs> mind because I'm I'm that old guy, right? That when you say library, I think tall stacks of books. Somebody exactly, yeah. I'm always getting shushed, right? Because I'm, I'm giggling, I'm goofing off, and you know, Big T's walking behind me, always making me laugh. And, um, but y- y'all have got so much more than that, and and. and Besides all these really big special events yeah. and community events, taking the library and, and literature and, and, and fun, exciting activities into the community, you've got a lot of stuff online. You mentioned ebooks before, but it goes so, so far beyond yes. that. <laughs> you've got online homework support and we tutoring. Mm-hmm. I, I know so many people that, that when they find out I'm a teacher, you're a teacher? Oh, my gosh, my kid's homework is killing me. <laughs> what do I do? And I always tell them the same thing. Get online, yeah. go to the public <laughs> library website. Tell us a bit about it. What do you offer? Yeah, so we we offer uh, this database called Help Now, like homework um, help now. It's through BrainFuse, which is, they do so much more than just homework help, though. Uh, they help out with uh, kids' math homework, um, English. You can send in essays. And it's basically for anyone in school, like, up to college, too. So it's not just, like... Right lower elementary high school kids it's also college students can take advantage of this send in your papers and they will help you they also have um help for jobs so it's called job now and they can help you out with your resume your cover letter and anything like that to kind of make sure that it looks great and it's ready for people that you're potentially applying for incredible (laughs) people pay hundreds of dollars thousands of dollars to (laughs) to have (laughs) help with their resumes and and things like that so you've got online support for kids from kinder through career yes that is phenomenal Mm -hmm. um so i've got a question if if uh let's say i'm in high school i'm struggling with my math homework do i need to make an appointment maybe a couple days from now i'll get some help or if i'm just stuck on a problem can i log in and get unstuck you can just log in Wow. (laughs) yeah so it's it's a it's all online so people do need their library card to log in Mm -hmm. but uh, once you log in you can select what grade level what kind of math you're doing and then they will pair you up with a tutor on the spot um it might take a little bit while they find someone who's available for that like what you're working on Uh but it you don't have to set up appointments days in advance it could be like oh my gosh i just don't know my homework right now you can log in on the spot and just get the help that you need so i'm a parent i've got two kids i've I've got two magnets on my refrigerator i'm gonna put a (laughs) third one on there one of them is the mental health crisis hotline we keep that front and center on our refrigerator Right underneath that, of course, we keep the the phone number to Domino's Pizza, <laughs> and right above, I think we're gonna put above that the library's website where yeah. my kids can log in, get help with. Well, right now they're gonna be looking for help with resumes and things like that. You also kind of well before we get to that, what is the library's website? How do you know folks yeah, are gonna so want to jot it down? Of course, so it's Santa Clarita Library dot com. <laughs> Super easy, right? Yes. Santa Clarita Library dot com. Piece of cake. Um, you glossed over something. You mm-hmm. said essays, paper editing. If I'm in college and, and, and I'm struggling with what is it, you know, I don't even know how to spell thesis, <laughs> um, but uh, what is that? People can submit papers and get it edited, revised, get feedback and you'll to make it better? you get feedback on it, and then up to you if you take the feedback. Oh, um, well, sure. But <laughs> um, you can submit your paper and – I think you submit your prompt too and mm-hmm. submit your paper and then they will read over it, uh, make suggestions for edits and things like that. You get it back and then you can take the feedback, change it up however you need to, and then you can submit your paper. I love that. Mm-hmm. Gosh, I can guarantee you if I, s- I submitted my paper, the feedback would be very well written, but you didn't answer the prompt. <laughs> That's what I always got from my fr- professors in school. <laughs> what an amazing service. Again, something that people pay hundreds of dollars yes. for. Y'all are providing for free. If you're yeah. spending money on any of this stuff, folks, y- you're, you're throwing it away because the library is doing a much better job and they're doing it for free. Yes, yeah, so you can do it from home, but we also have Homework Hub available at the libraries. So wow. the Old Town New Hall branch okay. offers Homework Hub Um I think Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 5.30, we do have volunteers there just waiting for people to show up. And it, people don't know. They don't take advantage of it. They don't come in. So we have volunteers available, and they're just waiting for someone to show up. All right. Now I'm going to throw a hypothetical at you. Uh-huh. You said 3.30 to 5.30? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's that's perfect. That is like my my perfect Peak sweet spot. Hour. That's my – right. So <laughs> so if I've got a, a, you know, a teen, a preteen uh-huh. – um, 
Am I allowed to drop them off and they can go in and get help, or do I need to be with them? So kids at the library have to be 14 years old um, okay. to stay by themselves. All right. If they are younger, they have to be with a responsible 14-year-old or above. All right. <laughs> so we do ask that parents stay if they can. Uh, you don't have to stay, like, watching on top of them. You can mm -hmm. go get a book, come back, and just sit around while you read. They get the homework help they need. <laughs> All right. And, mm -hmm. and you've got a lot of other services online that, that folks – don't even have to go into the library for, right? You, yes. You got the newspaper? We for, do have newspaper. I, mm -hmm. I don't even need to subscribe no. to the LA Times to read <laughs> it online? No, free goal is available. You get newspaper on there completely free. We do have like things where you can watch movies too online uh, called Canopy. Those uh -huh. are a little bit older movies, but you can still watch movies on there completely free. Sometimes people can't even find those movies in streaming services, so they go to Canopy to watch these. Yep. So it's, it's a lot of free resources and no one's doing them we also have linkedin learning uh learning express uh we have tons wow. of like things that people can just go in and learn new things new um hobbies like learn about different things and uh we have chilton which is also like auto repair things so you can if you are into auto repair you can do your own auto repair at home if you want to wow at the library, so you do have to be at the library for this one, but sure. we do have Ancestry.com available for people to log Wait. in. Yeah, so, but that one's at the library, so uh -huh. you do have to come in for Ancestry to work. Gosh, Ancestry.com, <laughs> if, if you're paying for that, mm -hmm. if you're paying for a subscription to the newspaper, if you got Netflix, you're just throwing your money away, folks. You are. You know, I, I do know that, uh, I know for a fact y'all have got my favorite movie of all time, uh, on your your canopy mm -hmm. library, it's the ultimate gift. You, you, I haven't seen you know, it. You gotta no. check it out. Okay, uh, okay. it'll warm your heart. It'll make <laughs> you cry a couple of times. Amazing, amazing movie. Anyways, uh, so now that you know, like I said, we're a charter school organization. We've got mm -hmm. a huge uh, homeschool program. Shout out to I Lead Exploration. Can I get a what 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 what? There we go. <laughs> so homeschool families often are very dependent on the local public libraries. Mm -hmm. What services do you have for homeschool families? So we do have a couple of programs. Um, we're starting up doing more programming for them around like the time that we see people come in for homeschooling. We do have a sort of science fair going on in a couple of weeks at the Canyon Country uh, the Canyon Country Library. Mm -hmm. uh, people can come in, the homeschool families can come in, and basically display any project the kids have been working on to basically have them just it, do it like an exposition. So this is available to kids that go to school, and we want to provide a space where homeschool kids can actually display their work and people can come in and see it and ask questions kind of like a science fair so people can just come in and display on any of their projects that they've been working on which is really great so um that that's going on we do have a space that they can come in and reserve uh we do also have uh, a couple of programs that they can come in to the canyon country uh, the old town new hall library provided a program recently i don't have it on top of my head but uh, check out our, our events calendar, santacurialibrary.com slash events okay. for more information. But we are getting a really cool uh, makeover to some of our collections, which will include kids' classics, ah. which homeschool families can definitely take advantage sure, of. So, it, yeah, yeah we, we are revamping a lot of our stuff because we do notice that a lot of our community needs the resources for homeschooling. So yeah. we hear yeah, We're here for you. <laughs> Fantastic. You really do have not something for everyone. you got a lot of stuff for everyone in the community. Soraya Martinez is the senior adult librarian with the Santa Clarita Public Library. Stop by, pick up a book, get caught up with One Story, One City, get online homework help, audiobooks, read the paper, and so much more. Again, it's santaclaritalibrary.com. Yes. Super easy to remember. <laughs> Soraya, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank we you so much you. for having me. It's my pleasure. When we get back, we've got Dr. Jasmine Rise, who will tell us all about College of the Canyons Discover Day. Discover what COC can do for you. I'm Matt Watson. You're listening to SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley. We'll be right back on your hometown station, KHTS. You don't have to choose between productivity, your health, and your family anymore. There's a natural choice for relief, free from drug side effects, and that can save you time and money. Hi, it's Santa Clarita Chiropractor Dr. Thomas Pilecki from the Senior Hour, and I'd love to help you get the relief you need to take care of business and your family. So I created the Better Than Money Back Guaranteed Consultation for just $79. Call 753-9340 to book your Better Than Money Back Guaranteed Consultation now. 
If you're looking for a great employment opportunity, why not check out Burtech? Burtech is currently hiring for their Santa Clarita division. Competitive salaries, health benefits, including dental and vision, not to mention paid holidays, vacation, and sick time. Burtech employees are even offered a 401k program. Several positions to consider, including drivers, mechanics, customer service, and dispatchers, just to name a few. Log on to Burtech.com to apply or attend their job fair March 8th, 12 to 8 at the Hyatt Valencia. At Burtech, we'll take care of it. Research shows that almost 80% of elderly adults want to remain in their homes for the long term. B-Style Home Care can help. They provide non-medical home care services, including medication reminders, light housekeeping, grocery shopping, and transportation to doctor's appointments. They can also provide respite relief for the primary caregiver or additional companionship for your loved one. B-Style caregivers are kind, considerate, and loving, helping to keep the dignity of the elderly or disabled client. B-Style Care is your best choice. Call 417 444 or go online to bestylehomecare.com for more information. Accidents happen, but rest assured Patterson's Collision Center is here to help. Patterson's is a family-owned and operated collision repair facility providing the Santa Clarita Valley with premium collision repairs. Patterson's prides itself on being the only California-certified green repair shop in all of Santa Clarita. They are insurance claim specialists and even offer payment plans for your deductible. For personalized, friendly service, visit pattersonscollisioncenter.com. Or call 294-1011 and let Patterson's Collision Center help ease your worries today. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, your host, and you are listening to SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley. Gosh, it's, it's only not even halfway through yet, and we've already had an amazing show. We had uh, Soraya Martinez in, if you missed her. She is the senior adult librarian at the Santa Clarita Public Library. They're doing so many great things. A little bit later on in the show, I'm going to be joined by Nadia Canche, um, who has written, she's, gosh, a hot young poet. She's, uh, she's written an amazing poem. Um, I believe it's called Maybe, Just Maybe. We're going to get to her in just a few minutes. But I believe now we are joined on the phone by Dr. Jasmine Rise with COC. Dr. Rise is a resident of the Santa Clarita Valley, where she and her husband, Steve, raised their two daughters. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't have Jasmine. We've got Diana. Well, I tell you what, Diana. Good morning. Hello, Diana. Hello, Diana. Hi. Are, are you there? there. I'm sorry. You know what? <laughs> Having a little bit of trouble with the phones this morning, so we're going to see if we can get Diana back on the phone. I believe Diana is joining us from College of the Canyons, and uh, she's going to be talking, I believe, about Discover Day. Um, <laughs> Did you attend COC? It seems like everybody in this valley attended College of the Canyons, and uh, they've got so much to offer. Uh, you know, when I was growing up here in the 80s, I thought of College of the Canyons as, you know, a, a two-year community college to bridge the gap between, uh, between high school and my four-year degree. But COC offers so much more than that, so many community services. And within the educational realm, they, they provide so much uh, to, uh, they provide so much to the community to get folks connected and, and dial people in to um, everything that is education. Did you know that at COC you can get your associate's degree, you can get your bachelor's degree, uh, you can get your master's all right here in Valencia at the campus of College of the Canyons. Uh, Dr. Van Hook and her team have built such an amazing experience. Um, and, and forget about the, the campus that they've got in Canyon Country as well. And, and so they're doing so many great things to just get you connected uh, to your education and then move into career. They've got, I know they've got an amazing nursing program, um, a lot of uh, technical education programs as well. In fact, I'm looking forward to, uh, to joining them for an event that's coming up very soon. 
uh, that's being put on, I believe, by their culinary arts students. Um, <laughs> and from what I hear, haven't been there before, I hear their culinary arts students are some of the finest chefs here in the Valley that, that just build some amazing things uh, as far as uh, gastronomy, as far as what'll, what'll tickle your palate. So, um, so they've got so many different things going on. Engineer Andrew, how are we doing? Have we got Diana on the phone? Hi, can you hear me? We've got you. Hooray. Hi. <laughs> hey, Diana, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So I've got on my books that we're talking about uh, something called Discover Day. Is that what we're here to talk about? Yes. All right. So first, Diana, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself. Who are you? What? Uh, what's... Uh, uh, what's your role at COC, and how long have you been with the, the school? Yeah, so my name's Diana Bogosian, and I've actually, um, what, I did attend COC back in 2016, and I got my associates in 2018. All right. And then I did hear that you were mentioning that um, you could receive a bachelor's here, which is actually the route that I took, and I got my bachelor's here in, in psychology, graduated 2020, um, and now I work for the outreach department, nice. outreach and school relations, so you'll definitely see me at this event coming up if you attend. I am the early college coordinator, so I work with our high school students who are looking to take college classes while still enrolled in high school, and I assist them with that process. So, yeah. And I failed to mention that. Such an amazing partnership you have with our local high schools, SCDI included, um, where you've yes. got high school <laughs> students taking college classes. Just the perfect on-ramp, right? Because I, mm -hmm. I remember when I took my first college class, I was so scared, so intimidated. Um, I would never admit it on the air, but I did terribly my freshman year because <laughs> I just wasn't ready for it. But but this is a great, seamless way to go from high school right into college. So you touched on Discover Day. Um, tell us what Discover Day is. What's the event all about, Diana? Yeah, so College of the Canyons, we're hosting our second annual Discover Day on Saturday, March 18th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the Valencia campus. This event will provide perspective and new students the opportunity to engage with college representatives from various academic programs, student services departments, and student organizations to learn more about how the college can help them achieve their educational and career goals. And this event really is for the community. So if you're a high school student looking to jumpstart college or if you're a graduating high school senior, maybe you're someone who's looking to start college for the first time, or maybe you're someone who's looking to change careers or maybe upskill in your current career. And even if you're a returning student, we just hope to see everyone there. Fantastic. So it, it's it's not just kind of a information night for high schoolers. It's for the whole community. So basically Correct. kind of a come and check out what COC can do for you. Exactly, Are, yeah. <laughs> so, so I show up to Discover Day. What can I expect to see? So participants will have the opportunity to explore the many majors available at COC by visiting information tables and, in some cases, visiting that specific academic program's classroom or lab space, um, such as the Culinary Arts Center or our Early Childhood Education Center. And participants will actually also be able to attend workshops that are hosted by many of our programs and services, as well as visit student service offices that will be open to showcase all that's available for the community. And Honestly, the best way to experience our beautiful campus is by taking a campus tour, which yeah. they're able to sign up for during the event. Fantastic. Now, everybody knows that, uh, that COC is probably the most economic option around when it comes to higher education, but mm -hmm. things are really tough right now. You know, I think eggs are up over $25 a dozen right now, right. And, <laughs> and rent isn't coming down anytime soon, so folks may right. need even... Uh, with, uh, with the extremely affordable cost of COC, folks may need some financial aid. Um, mm -hmm. You used to have a program when my kids were heading into college called Canyons Pro uh, Promise. Is that something mm -hmm. that's still uh, still available? Yes. So actually our financial aid department and the Canyons Promise program will both be hosting workshops through the event. The financial aid workshop will highlight the various types of financial aid available to students and how to start the FAFSA or the California DREAM Act application. And then our Canyons Promise Workshop will highlight the program's eligibility and requirements for new incoming students who are interested in receiving their first two years of college for free. And both participants will have um, the opportunity to visit the financial aid office or the Canyons Promise table to learn more. Fantastic. Now, Diana, producer Sarah is really hitting me where I live. Uh, on your website, does it seriously say you've got a free In-N-Out Burger lunch at the event? 
Yes, I'm so excited for that. <laughs> so, right? There will be a free in and out lunch um, that will be provided to participants who visit at least five departments or programs or organizations. And you guys have got so many programs. I, I guarantee you, if, if someone's just looking for a free in and out burger and, and they don't think they're really interested, hit five of those booths. I guarantee right. you, you're going you're gonna to have an inkling about something that COC can do for you, and you're going to have a nice double-double to power down. That is for awesome. For sure. And there's going to be so many tables. We have over, we offer over 195 programs. So there's going to be something for everybody. Fantastic. So the job market I know is shifting pretty radically right now. How can College of the Canyons help us with retaining or, or finding new work? Is, is this a good event for someone who's looking to make a career shift? Definitely. We do have our career center. Um, we have career counselors. There's different tests um, and assessment, not really a test, but an assessment that um, students and participants can take just to kind of see where they're currently at. Maybe they need to shift or maybe um, to learn something new about them that they didn't already know and then kind of see where they can be placed um, in the career field. Fantastic. So have you got a website? How do people attend? Yes, so definitely. Um, once again, it's Saturday, March 18th from 9 a.m. to 1 at the COC Valencia campus, which is on 26455 Rockwell Canyon Road. The website for more information is going to be www.canyons.edu forward slash discover day. Fantastic. Diana, I want to thank you so much for calling in. Thank you for your patience with us. I know I, I know my educational institutions, and College of the Canyons is the most innovative, dynamic community college I've ever seen. Y'all are doing great things out there, building great leaders. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, and I hope to meet you. Thank you again. Fantastic. You, you, you'll find me at the In-N-Out tent. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll both be there. <laughs> Have a great weekend, Diana. I am you Matt well, Watson. Drive safe. I am Matt Watson. You're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, your host, and you are listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. We are coming to you live from the center of Main Street here in beautiful downtown Newhall. A little bit dark, a little bit wet outside in downtown Newhall and probably where you are as well as long as you're in Southern California. We're going to have a rainy weekend this weekend. Uh, enjoy it because it'll be 110 before you know it. But uh, let's get to our next guest. I'm really, really excited. i got to be honest and, and no offense to the librarian that joined us or Diana from COC, but I don't know that I've been excited about a guest uh, as much as I'm excited this morning to be joined by this amazing young poet. She is a student at I Lead Online. Yeah, I Lead Online High School, uh, a native of East Los Angeles, a young lady with wisdom and social insight far beyond her years, who's demonstrating her ability and outright determination to tear down barriers and societal mores anywhere she goes. She is Nadia Canche. Nadia, welcome to Eye on the Valley. Hello. So, Nadia, I actually heard this poem that you wrote recently read by someone else during an organizational action committee that I belong to, and I was absolutely floored. I mean, I was in tears after uh, hearing someone else recite your poem, and then later I got to hear you recite it at your school's monthly school board meeting recently, and, and, and man, I, I thought I was blown away when I heard well, you and I are both friends with Rigo. When I heard Rigo read your poem, I was floored. But to hear you read it live was just absolutely phenomenal. But before we get to that, I want to get to know you just a little bit, okay? So um, I mentioned you're a learner at iLead Online. How long have you been with iLead Online, and what grade are you in? Uh, I'm in 11th grade, so I'm a junior. I've been with iLead Online since my sophomore year, so last year. Okay. And we started in 2021, so two years now. All right. Yes. All right. So a couple of years. Uh, yeah, because you're finishing up your, your second year. Gosh, time goes by so quick. So um, so how did you find us? Because I'm in marketing and communications <laughs> for our schools, and, and it's really tough when you don't have a school building to throw a banner yeah. over or, or, or a big sign. Our school is just kind of out there in the cloud, right? So, so you're not going to see our school by driving by it. How did you find us? And then what made you decide to switch to an online school? So my mom's co-worker actually told her about it because her sons were in it at the beginning of COVID. Okay. And so then they were saying, oh, this is such a great school. The teachers are so supportive. They actually care about their students. It's a great school. 
And so my mom talked to us, and we decided we wanted to try it out, and now we're here, and we love it. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, I've heard that since the very inception of iLead Online. I think they started offering classes for the first time back in 2015, and um, I was a high school principal at the time, and I was enrolling some of my kids in different classes. Uh, you know, at my high school, we were classroom-based high school, and... Oh, we did pretty well. We offered as foreign language, we offered, uh, or second language, we offered Spanish, we offered Korean, but, uh, you know, some of my students wanted to take Japanese or American Sign Language or things like that. And, you know, I couldn't bring in five different uh, uh, language teachers because we only had an enrollment of 200 kids at SCVI. And so I started recommending that, that my kids take courses, which you can also do. You know, you pick up one or two courses that I lead online. And they started telling me, Mr. Watson, I'm getting more attention. I'm getting more support in this online school than I am in some of my classes here on campus where I'm face-to-face, one-on-one with my teachers. Are you finding the same thing? Yes, yes, I am. So, so tell us about your, your typical day. Is it like you probably don't have bells ring sending you to class, mm, but, no. but do you sit down in front of the computer from 8 to 3 and, and go through your normal schedule of classes? What does your regular school day look like? Uh, so I usually wake up about 9 or 10. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and then I do some homework, or if I don't want to do homework that day, I go out, take a walk with my sister for her PE hours. Okay. Which is really good since... Because your sister attends I Lead Online as well. Yes, yes, she does. Okay, so you're going with yes. her for, for her I PE? I help her with her PE, and I go back to school work. Sometimes I'm there until 10. If I really like the assignment, if it's something I think I can do all day, I'm there all day. If not, I finish up about 3.30 or 4. Okay, so you kind of write your own schedule. You're kind of doing school as you like to do it, as you want to do it. Am I right? Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. It provides you a tremendous amount of freedom. Now, you do have to stay on top of your work. Yes, I do. It's how you want to do it, not if you want to do it, right? Yes, correct. So if you're not doing your stuff, you're still going to fail your classes just like a regular brick and mortar school. Correct. All right, fantastic. So, um... So tell us about what classes you're taking. Um, what, what is your, you know, I don't want to say schedule, but if we were on campus, what, what courses are you taking right now as a junior? I take six classes, math, Spanish, English, uh, U.S. history, and world history. Oh, wow. And then I take an elective child development. Interesting. So you're taking a child development class as a junior in high school. Yes. Okay. I, I know of a lot of high schools that have uh, – Gosh, probably 100 teachers on campus, 4,000 kids that don't have a child development class. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What are you learning in that class? Today's semester is diversity and equity and how to enable that in a classroom with young children and how to basically tear down biases that we may have. Okay. So so talk to us about the interaction because I know there's a lot of people that are listening that are like, huh, online school, what's that look like? Is it... Click, click, take the test. What kind of interactions are you having with your your teachers? Um, what kind of support do you get? I get a lot of support. We have a weekly meeting with our advisor, which is our kind of counselor, mm-hmm. uh, every week. So she checks up on us. She texts us to make sure we're doing everything well. If we have any questions, we can always email her or the teachers, which is really great because they get back to us within 24 hours. Okay. So so you've got your – each class has its teacher. Yes. And you've got your counselor. Is that the same as your academic coach? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. So, so you've got a counselor or coach who's making sure you're staying on top of things. Correct. It's really cool. It's kind of like that, uh, you know, mom who's not your mom, dad who's not your dad kind of thing, following up and, you know, are, are you getting your work done? Are you struggling? It, I've heard your work. I, I've, I've talked to you a little bit, and, and you seem to be – really sharp but i'd imagine if like you're falling behind you're not doing well in class they connect you to tutors as well i know they have Correct. free tutoring yes uh i'm trying to set that up right now okay because i am struggling with math right. which is not the best but the teachers are so supportive and mm-hmm. really understanding so that's really great when you're falling behind uh-huh. you can always go to the teachers to your coach or to the online tutor support and you can get caught up and they can make adjustments for you if you need the help Phenomenal. which is really great yeah, so it's not just about the flexibility no. of being able to study when you're ready and, and go as late in the day as you want or, or knock off early if you need to, which I know is why the, 
the program is so popular with young actors or, or athletes and people that have different training schedules, but you're also getting a ton of support. You got a teacher for every class. You got an academic coach that stays on top of you and makes sure you're staying on top of your things. And then you also can get connected to free tutoring if you need it. That, yes. is, that is fantastic. So tell me, um, <laughs> there's so much to offer, but what do you like best about our school? I like the creative freedom we have. So in almost each class, we have options of what assignment to do and how we can do it. So if, for example, for an English class, we can write a short story, an essay, or sometimes even create um, art pieces, uh -huh. which is really great because it shows, because not everyone learns the same way. There's visual learners, audio learners, and they really try to do their best. So this way we can all show what we're learning and still get graded for it equally. That is beautiful. I love to hear it the way you say it because that really was the dream that we had when we wrote the charter for iLead Online is iLead specializes in personalized learning. We've done so for 15 years at SCVI and our other schools, but it was really kind of a tough question for us to tackle when we decided to open an online school is how can we offer this personalized learning? How can we offer our students choice and uh, options to design their own educational path that still meets those rigorous standards and that's how they're doing it they yep. rather than giving you one assignment that meets this standard they're giving you four five six options and you get to choose it's that really is, great that is fantastic I love that so I love hearing all about our schools and, and, and the great things that they offer to to each individual style of learning but uh, I asked you to come all the way up here this morning in the rain to talk about this this poem that you wrote. It's called Maybe Just Maybe. Um, before we get to the poem, I want to ask, wh what class was this for? Because I know you did it as one of the options for an assignment for one of your classes. Yes, it was for my U.S. History class with Ms. Scomsvold. Okay, U.S. History. Not yes. I would have figured it was, you know, you wrote a poem for <laughs> English class. But this is for a U.S. History class. So what was the assignment or the project? The assignment was about the Harlem Renaissance. We had to research some artists, some writers and poets about the Harlem Renaissance and how their impact change was based on social justices uh -huh. and social issues. And then after we researched them, we had to create our own piece okay. of social justices and our thoughts and feelings towards an issue. That is so cool. Now, I'm a history guy, and, and I love that because I, my whole life I've had people, you know, knock me. Because first of all, going through high school, whether it was history, math, science, the question I always had and a lot of my classmates always had is, how does this connect to me, right? Why do I care about this? And then a lot of people would ask me about history, right? That, that's old, that's done, that's gone. For example, Harlem Renaissance, that took place years ago and, and 3,000 miles away. What does that have to do with a, an 11, 11th grade student in Southern California in 2023? What's the connection? Well, boom, automatically that question's off the table because that's the assignment. They ask you, how does the Harlem Renaissance connect with, or how can you connect with the Harlem Renaissance? I think I might be answering my own question because I'm pretty good at writing projects. Um, was that what was the driving question for, the for this project? The driving question was how did the art of the 1920s reflect social justice issues during that time? Okay, okay, but then, then they tie it in to say, okay, now let's hear about your yes. personal experience. Let's hear about how how this resonates with you and I, I do want to talk about that but I kind of want to like I, I don't know I, if we were at home like I'd clear the furniture out of the <laughs> living room and give you some space so we're going to do that kind of radio wise right we're going to clear the space and, and and give you an opportunity to share your poem but before we do we do need to take care of a little bit of business and give our listeners a chance to to grab some Kleenex because because like your poem for me is like one of those amazing maybe hip-hop songs that I listened to in the 80s and 90s where it's like, yeah, I, I'm jamming with this beat. I'm vibing with this. And then, boom, it comes back and just hits you. So my listeners, they're going to want to grab a, a box of Kleenex uh, and, and get ready for this. Like I said, I'm talking to young poet Nadia Canche. She's a junior at iLead Online Charter High School, and uh, she's got this amazing poem that you won't believe. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm Matt Watson. You are listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. 
Celebrate the new year with the Canyon Theater Guild's presentation of Beehive, the 60s musical. Beehive celebrates the powerful female voices of the 1960s with such timeless hits as My Boyfriend's Back, Be My Baby, Son of a Preacher Man, and Me and Bobby McGee. Told from the perspective of six young women from their first Beehive dance to the challenges we face as a nation. Get your tickets to Beehive by calling 661-799-2702 or online at canyontheater.org. Right now, as you're listening to this, the last thing on your mind is needing a plumber. Whitaker Plumbing understands. That's why we want you to store this in the for later use file in your brain. Whitaker Plumbing will handle all emergencies. Your toilet won't stop running? Call Whitaker. Your sink is dripping? Call Whitaker. Your garbage disposal sounds funky? Whitaker will handle it. Upgrading your water heater? All your plumbing services with one call. Whitaker Plumbing. Whitaker with one T. Plumbing. SCB.com. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. And we're also on Facebook Live. I think Nadia's mama's watching us on Facebook Live. You want to say hi, Mom? Hi, Mommy. <laughs> All righty. So I'm, I'm joined by poet Nadia Canche. She's a learner with iLead Online Charter School. That's right. iLead Online Charter School. She's an 11th grader in high school. iLead Online offers classes actually as early as TK all the way through 12th grade. Yeah, you look surprised because <laughs> you joined us as a sophomore. But, but yeah, and, and listeners, you may be wondering, really, how are you going to provide a, a, a robust education for my first grader, teach them how to read in an online school? I'm not going to get into that right now, but check us out at iLeadOnline.org. You can get connected with Suzanne and Rigo, our amazing welcome wagon team, and, and, and they will plug you in. You have never met preschool, elementary school age teachers like they've got at iLead Online. Just an amazing staff. But as, as you can hear, the high school staff is doing some amazing stuff as well. And, and, and well, look at the, the material they've got to work with here with Nadia Canche. So I'll ask you to read your poem in, in just a second. Um, I, I just kind of want to set it up again for folks who are just dialing in. Um, Nadia, you're attending iLead Online uh, because of the flexibility and, and how dynamic and, and supportive the entire staff is. Uh, you had this project in your history class, not your English class, your history class. And I love how all of our classes are so, um, uh, what do we call it, uh, multidisciplinary, right? There's crossover from each of the classes. So you, uh, y'all were studying the Harlem Renaissance of the 20s and uh, your facilitator, Suzanne Sconswold, asked you, uh, how does, uh, uh, does the art from the 1920s, in particular from the Harlem Renaissance, um, uh, connect with you and, and your life's experience? And in response, you wrote this poem. It's called Maybe Just Maybe, right? Yes. All right. So, uh, so go ahead. Let, take some space. Take your time. And, and would you please share this amazing poem with our listeners? Of course. I never see myself on TV, I never read about myself in books, never see myself getting Oscars or Golden Globes, Grammys or Tonys. It's always diversity matters, but it only matters when it's about everyone else but me. It's always Happy Hispanic and Latino Heritage Month, but after the month passes, we're back in the shadows like the other 11 months out of the year. My mistake, I forgot to include the one other day we get, Cinco de Mayo. What is it with the movie industry casting anyone but us? Colorism and racism. They want to tell our stories, but they can't even get our coloring right. They can't get anyone that's actually Latino. They want to tell our stories, but they're just silencing our voices even more. I only see the pretty white actors, the pretty white singers, the pretty European ones. But what about me? I want to be white because maybe, just maybe, I can finally be seen. Maybe, just maybe, I can finally be pretty, talented, wanted. I blow out the candles on my quinceanera cake and silently wish I were whiter. I see a shooting star and silently wish, make me white. I dye my hair blonde, straighten it, and get blue contacts. I wear what all the white girls are wearing. I listen to the music they listen to. I don't dare speak Spanish. I eat the same food they do, Chipotle and Chick-fil-A, so they don't ask about the cow tongue tacos or our spicy tripe soup. Why? 
Because then maybe just maybe the cool kids will like me. Maybe just maybe he'll think I'm pretty. Maybe just maybe they'll finally pick me. Maybe just maybe I'll be accepted. The good schools are in white communities. White communities with white kids and white teachers. I'm one of the only Latinos there. Stereotypes are constantly forced down my throat and what can I do about it? Nothing. I walk into the cafeteria on a Tuesday. Great. Taco Tuesday with the white kids. I can already hear the jokes coming. I must stay calm. I can't be offended. This will just prove to them that Latinas really are crazy. I can't react, so I laugh along, afraid to make the white kids uncomfortable. Why? I want to fit in. I want to be liked. I want to be included. But they won't accept me no matter how hard I try. So I wear my dark curly hair proudly. I wear my brown eyes proudly, my brown skin proud. Those hoops I was afraid would make me look too ghetto, I put them on. The shirt my abuela brought back to me from Mexico I was afraid would make me look too Mexican, I wear it. The Natalia Lafourcade album I secretly loved but was too ashamed to play anywhere else but in my own room, I blast in my car. I speak my Spanish proudly, and I finally stopped eating at Chipotle and Chick-fil-A in exchange for my delicious tacos de lengua and menudo. Society has made it impossible to be a proud Latina in this country. Speaking Spanish and wearing your traditional clothes make the white people uncomfortable. How dare I do that? I don't care anymore. My culture is beautiful. I'll be one of the many on TV. I'll be one of the many represented in books. I'll be one of the many getting Oscars, Golden Globes, Grammys, and Tonys. The world will know about us year-round and not just during Hispanic and Latino Heritage Month. I'll be one of the many Latinas in the movie industry. I'll be one of the many non-white actresses on stage. I'll be one of the many non-European ones. I am Latina. I am seen. I am pretty. I am talented. I am wanted. I am beautiful. And so is my culture. <laughs> you did it again. Uh, gosh, absolutely amazing. Um, you, you brought me to tears again. Um, Nadia, that was uh, amazing. Thank you. It's kind of a, almost like a before and after kind of feel for me, um, where you were feeling invisible, uh, afraid to be who you were born to be, um, almost embarrassed and ashamed. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Clearly, you've got plenty of your own. Let's talk about that before, the, what you were feeling where you didn't feel represented in popular culture, in things that you were seeing. Talk to us about that experience in your life. So for me and for many other Latinos, we're not seen or included in the media, in TV shows, in movies. And it's really, it's hurting. It's sad because it's almost as if Hollywood just says, oh, they're not worth representing. They're not worth our time. They're not worth our money. Why should we care about making a movie that's real and actually represents them in a real way? Mm -hmm. It's like they don't care. They just put whatever they want. They don't care if it's stereotypical or hurtful, which is mainly what's out there. And the good shows that we do get that actually represent who we are, Hollywood cancels them because it's not cool enough. It's not what we want to see. It's not what the audience wants to see. And it's it's hurting. It's really sad. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, I, I want to... Um, I certainly understand your experience. And uh, you're just one of many... Uh, Latino voices that I've, I've heard express this. But what about someone who might say, well, Jennifer Lopez is one of the highest paid actors around, and Sofia Vergara has this, this show that's been going on for, for years. Do you feel like that's enough? Do you feel like that is representative of you and your experience? It's not enough. It isn't. I'll say... Um, Jennifer Lopez is Puerto Rican, uh -huh. and Sofia Vergara is Colombian. Correct. Which it, which is great, you know. It's the Latino representation, but we need more. There's we have Salma Hayek, which is great. It's wonderful. I, I gotta agree with you there. <laughs> Salma Hayek is great. We need more <laughs> because that's only yeah. you only listed two people. Right. How many white people can we name? Well, and and. You know, you really slapped me right in the <laughs> teeth. You're right, because here I'm saying, but we do have people that represent your experience, and I mentioned uh, people from Different two countries. places that are thousands of miles away from East Los Angeles or Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, and, and cultures that, sure, while they've got language and, and maybe some food, uh, uh, similar, vastly different cultures, uh, I mean, 
Mofongo from Puerto Rico is nothing like tacos de lengua that you enjoy. Um, <laughs> so you're right. It, it, it really almost is kind of tokenizing for, for me to, to bring something up like that, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologize. Um, so now let's go to that kind of after. Y you kind of, we walk through some sort of transformation that took place in your own life, right? Where you, you kind of, uh, I got to tell you, the, the first half of your poem is kind of depressing, <laughs> right? It's like, oh my gosh. But then you come back and say, nope. It's going to be me, and it's going to be many, many others like me who, who stand up and do take our place in pop culture, in American society, in education, in, in all different sectors. Um, so what brought about that transformation in your experience? All of the anger and disappointment and sadness I feel when I see that we aren't being represented or we aren't being represented properly, it just encouraged me I, I can be the change, I can make a difference, I can make an impact, and if I can do it, so many other Latinas and Latinos can. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, gosh, th that is inspiring. It, it demonstrates such incredible strength. Um, I want to ask you where that comes from, because you're, <laughs> you're a junior in high school, and I can't underscore that enough, because I remember long, long, <laughs> long time ago, being a junior in high school, and, and, and I was just kind of trying to bump around, get from class to class, hope that, uh, you know, that, that person in, in my history class notices me, and, and um, you know, you demonstrate such incredible strength, where you talk about how society seems to be holding you back, misrepresenting you, but it doesn't matter. I'm enough. I'm going to break through that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to lead the way for others and bring my entire culture and, and people with me. Where does that strength come from, Nadia? My mom. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Tell me about your mom. She is Mexican, just like me. Okay. And she's really awesome. She's amazing. And she really, growing up and still to this day, she tells us that we can do, we're, oh, we can do whatever <laughs> we want and we can. It doesn't matter what society thinks of us what labels they might put on us, we can still do what we can do. So it's really great. Absolutely love that. What strength, what power. That is beautiful. So uh, so mom taught you you can do whatever you want. Yes. You believed it. You're doing it. Um, so let's, let's look forward a little bit. Um, you've talked about some of the classes that you're taking at iLead Online. Um, what is it that you see in in your future? I know y you don't have a crystal ball. At least you didn't bring it with you this morning. <laughs> but uh, have you got plans for, for your future? Are you thinking ahead to college, career? Uh, I would hope to go to college. You know, if it's in – I want to go to college. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Right now, I don't know where. Maybe somewhere in California uh. or, you know, somewhere in New York. Those okay. <laughs> The other coast, it's fine. Uh -huh. Wherever I go, something to do with the child education field, All child right. development. Yeah, you talked yes. about the child development course that you're taking. Again, I can't, <laughs> I can't believe that we're offering a, a, a child development class to juniors in high school at iLead Online. So you're thinking about maybe something in child development? Yes. Or I have really, I really liked my U.S. history class, my uh. U.S. and world history class. So maybe something. I'm looking into the history field. Love it. But, yes, those are my two choices right now. You know, they do say that some of the best-looking people in the world major in <laughs> history in college. Or at least that's what I like <laughs> to say. <laughs> so, very cool. You're keeping your options open. I love that you know that um, that you're young and, and, and with your talent and brains, the world really is wide open for you. This, uh, this is phenomenal. Um, so, uh, this poem that you wrote that you shared with us is absolutely incredible. Getting a lot of traction. Um, have you thought about um, uh, publishing it, reaching out to publishers or, or other organizations to, uh, uh, to kind of promote this and, and, and put it on a, a, a greater platform? I've thought about it, yes. I, it's something that needs a lot of research and make sure you really want to do it. Mm -hmm. Read all the fine print. Make sure it doesn't get stolen from you. But, yes. Uh, there <laughs> you go. Oh, gosh. I love that. Not only are you... Are you just setting the world on fire. You're making sure that you're protecting mm, yes. your intellectual property. 
Love it. Okay, I'm sorry. Continue. So you've thought so about it. So it's something I'm looking into, something I'm discussing with my family. And mm -hmm. if, if it happens, it happens, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> what a beautiful <laughs> philosophy. Um, is this kind of your first foray into poetry? Have you yes. written? This is my <laughs> first poem. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. I usually stick with short stories. But for this right. one, I was just writing, and that came as I was typing. And they're like, this is a poem. It's a great poem. And I'm like, oh, it's a poem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Uh, amazing what you can do when you just kind of open your heart, open your mind, and, and, and let things flow. Yes. And uh, I, I do want to share a little bit about our school culture. Um, if you've been listening to this entire segment, you can see why our educators, while they are highly qualified and credentialed in their subject areas, we don't call them teachers, we call them facilitators, because that's what they do. Um, all of our educators, but clearly, Mrs. Skolmsvold set the stage and stepped back and let you be the amazing person that you are. She really did, she's amazing. Yeah, um, and so if, uh, if you're thinking, huh, maybe online learning is, is something that, uh, that might be right for my kid, um, you know, we've got folks, um, that come from all different experiences. I know we've got a lot of uh, uh, a lot of your classmates are folks training for um, Olympic or other level uh, athletic events, and their schedule just does, doesn't work. Right? They're training and 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 need some sort of flexible alternative while still wanting to have that rich, rigorous high school experience. We've got uh, you know being authorized here in Southern California. Obviously, we've got a lot of actors who are on set during, uh, during the day. Um, but folks like yourself that, uh, that are looking for that flexibility and individualized learning where you're able to learn the curriculum at, at deep, rigorous levels, but choose your path. A, do you want to study <laughs> earlier in the morning, later in the afternoon, well into the night? Um, at, but also, how you want to tackle each standard, each project. Um, and so we've got something for everyone at iLead Online. So if you're interested in that, uh, go to iLeadOnline.org to get more information. As a matter of fact, your school had an informational night a couple days ago, and uh, there were a lot of families that, that dialed in uh, as the staff shared all the different things that iLead Online offers. Again, TK through 12th grade, if you think your kindergartner is going to be stuck on the computer all day long because they're in an online school, not true. They actually do a better job of, of getting kids outside and interacting with, uh, w with nature, with the community, with the world around them, um, and spend as little time on the computer as needed. But obviously, your teachers are there, your coaches are there, your free tutors are there, y you get a tremendous amount of support. So there is really something for everyone and deep, exciting, rigorous learning at iLead Online. Again, one more time for more information, go to iLeadOnline.org. Uh, Nadia, I, I can't thank you enough for sharing your poem with us. Is there anything else that you want to say before you go? Thank you so much for having me. I really didn't expect my poem to get this much attention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing an assignment for my high school yeah. history class, and, uh, and uh, here I am now... Uh, uh, in the radio station. Oh, right? radio station. It, it, it's, it really is beautiful. Thank you. Y thank you. It you've really means a lot. <laughs> oh, well, you have touched us this morning, um, and you've got my contact info. I want you to keep me posted because I want to be able to say, yeah, yeah, I was there when uh, when she was first debuting that poem. He was poem the first one that interviewed me. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And, and, and I want to be able to, to just kind of ride your coattails into into fame and fortune or, or <laughs> you know, wherever you go because I know you're going to be doing some amazing things. Nadia, you're so inspirational. Thank you so much for, uh, well, I was going to say making the drive, but you took the train all the way up this morning in the rain. Yep. Good choice. Good choice. If you're out there in your car, stay safe. It is wet. Thank you again for joining us. Promise you'll come back when you release your first book or uh, discover the next element or whatever it is that you do. I won't be the one discovering the element. She will be the one discovering she, the element. You're pointing at your sister. Yes. Do you want to introduce your sister? She's off camera right now. This is my sister, Hermione. She's in ninth grade, and she's she's amazing. And she also goes to Eileen yes, Online. Yes, yes, she does. Okay. Well, you both are amazing, and I appreciate you coming into the studio. And, and we appreciate you listening. Now, 
Uh, did you have your Kleenex? I, I, I hope you, you wiped the tears away from your eyes because Big T's coming in next. He's got some fun and some trivia, and, and hopefully we'll stay away from scandal. We had a scandal here on uh, Big T's Five Minutes of Fame the last couple of weeks. Uh, I think we, we had it all worked out, and then, uh, and then Lisa rushed into the, the, the studio last week and stirred the pot again. But uh, Big T's always got something fun and, and playful for us. He will join us when we come back. Won't you stick around and, and play along with us, too? This is SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. This is KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. And this is Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, and I'm still a little choked up from uh, that amazing poem, Maybe Just Maybe, that we heard from Nadia Kanche uh, with iLead Online Charter School. You know, Precious was a little bit surprised uh, as, uh, as they walked away to, to learn that Nadia lives in East Los Angeles, and she says, I thought iLead was like just from around here. Well, I, I told Precious exactly what I'll tell you. Um, you know, all of our schools are authorized here in kind of the northern part of LA County, but you can attend any of our schools as long as you live in L.A. County or any of the adjacent counties. So, like, SCVI has kids that drive in from, you know, Ventura County, which is just a few miles west on the 126. Um, but when you've got a home school or an online school, you can take kids from all over. So we've got tons of families that live in Costa Mesa, Orange County area, downtown L.A., uh, Kern County um, Bakersfield, we've got families in San Bernardino, and, and then of course, you know, tons of families from here in Santa Clarita, in Acton, Agua Dulce, Palmdale, Lancaster. Uh, yeah, that's kind of one of the great things about charter schools is you don't have those small boundaries that your local public school has. So, and, and then again, like I said, uh, with a school like uh, I Lead Online, as long as you live in LA or an adjacent county, you can enroll again at ileadonline.org. But I feel like I've said too much, because after all, this is Big T's five minutes of fame. Y'all know Big T. Big T is a longtime resident and leader in the Santa Clarita Valley. He is an executive and philanthropist. He's an amazing father, husband, and community leader. And you know, if you give him a penny for his thoughts, he'll give you change. Here he is, everybody. He's mom's favorite. Big T, welcome to the show. Good morning, Maddie. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Hey, were you watching on Facebook Live? I was not watching on Facebook Live, but I was listening, and I realized I didn't know I could get that much extra time if I just wrote some poetry. So uh, <laughs> I think he's going to be working on something for next week. All right, fantastic. We, we look forward to hearing your poetry. And, and speaking of, of poetry and prose, I'm repping one of my favorite authors this morning. Can you guess who it is? Uh, who's that? I, I, I tell you what, Engineer Precious, you want to read my T-shirt for Big T? Can, can you Can you – do you read Spanish, Precious? I might have an accent. <laughs> um, it, it, I can try. I tell you what, how about, how about if I help you out? Tony, I, I figured, you know, we were having, uh, we were having a, a librarian in today representing literature, and she happens to be Hispanic. We, we had an amazing poet in who, who is also Chicana, and so I figured I, I'd wear my T-shirt that says, El que lee mucho y anda mucho, ve mucho y sabe mucho which is a quote from one of my favorite art authors, uh, Miguel de Cervantes, right? You know what that means, Big T, right? Yes, I do. In fact, where'd you get that cool shirt? Oh, I got it from my brother for Christmas. <laughs> you know. And, and, and producer Sarah, what it means is he who reads much and walks much, sees much and knows much. Very simple. Oh, I like that. Very profound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, by the way, everybody, producer Sarah's joining us for uh, Big T's Five Minutes of Fame today. Hi there, everyone. Thanks so, for having me. Good morning, Sarah. Glad to have you, Sarah. You put together another phenomenal show today. But, uh, Big T, I, uh, I feel like I've... Are you actually giving me credit? You did all the heavy lifting on this one, my friend. This was your show, and it was fantastic. <laughs> Sarah, Thank you so much for making us look good. I, I feel like we talked about this yesterday. Your job is to take all the credit and 30% higher pay. Oh, I, don't I wish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Big T, I feel like uh, I've, I've talked so much. You're, you're down to about four minutes of fame today. So what have you got for us? 
Perfect. I've got some. Uh, I've got some baseball, world baseball classic trivia. All right. Some movie quote trivia. Since we got the Academy Awards coming up, but I wanted to start off with a little fun fact. You know, we got St. Patrick's Day coming up next weekend, and I would not recommend any of these things. But Matt, you and I have talked about Andre the Giant and how legendary he is. Hello, and I know this is a school show. Andre the Giant was seven foot four and weighed between five hundred and seven hundred pounds. Wow, that's a big man. And he, he liked to get after it a little bit. The record they said is he once consumed about 119 12 ounce beers in a six hour setting. Stop. When he filmed the movie, he, 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 he couldn't. Tony, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Yeah. Andre the Giant once That's consumed. Beer three minutes. 119 beers in six hours? Yep. That'd kill a man. He also, he also at the filming of The Princess Bride, The Hyatt in London, he ran up a $40,000 bar tab during the filming. <laughs> you know, what? One night in New York, him and Dusty Rhodes, they hijacked a couple of horse-drawn carriages and proceeded to joyride around New York. <laughs> that was the day that that was the day that the New York Police Department decided to assign an officer to him, so that any time he went out drinking, he didn't get drunk and fall on someone. Oh, geez, Andre the Giant and Dusty Rhodes—that's a—that's that's a meetup that I want to be at. <laughs> yep. So, so quickly, so Big T's going to be on a plane here in about four hours, and I'm flying to Arizona to meet my lovely daughter, and we're going to the World Baseball Classic tomorrow. Very so cool. So I, I have some current Dodgers and Angels, or former Dodgers and Angels, people that you would know, mm -hmm. that are playing in the World Baseball Classic, and so I want you to guess what teams they're representing. All right. All righty? Shohei Otani. Frogger. Frogger. He's representing Japan. That is Japan, correct. All right. Mookie Betts, Will Smith, and Mike Trout. Frogger? Frogger? This one seems too obvious for me. It's the United States, right? The United States of America. Kiki uh, Hernandez. Oh! Sarah? Um, Sarah. Is that the DR? Not the DR, no. Oh. Frogger. Frogger. For those of our fans on, uh, on Facebook Live, I'm repping him as well. It's Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is correct. It's that sweatshirt underneath the T-shirt. Yep, Manny Machado. Uh, Manny Machado, uh, Frogger. Frogger. I'm gonna go with Dominican Republic. Perfect. We'll get out of this real quick. Um, Adam Kolarik and Jock Peterson. Oh. Frogger. Anybody? Frogger. Is that Canada? Uh, no, not Canada. It's actually Israel. Sarah, did you want to take a guess? I was going to guess Canada. <laughs> so. Sarah, come so on. Freddie, Freddie Freeman is representing Canada. And Trace Thompson is representing Great Britain. Oh, cool. Fun stuff. All right, you get some movie quotes, but before we do, you know what? What movie won the first ever Oscar for Best Animated Film? Frogger. Frogger. Was it Snow White and the Seven Dwarves? Sarah. Uh, incorrect. Sarah. Fantasia. Incorrect. It's actually Shrek. Oh. So, Matty, uh, being, being that there's a landslide with baseball, now we're going to go to movie quotes. So let's light the scoring slate clean, and we're starting zero zero. All right. Okay. Sounds good. I'm, I'm going to give you a movie quote. You tell me the movie, and if you can tell me the name of the character that said it, you get an extra point. All right. Okay. There's no crying in baseball. Sarah. Sarah. Oh. What's uh, the movie? Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, I knew it when you said it. It's, um, 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 oh, my gosh. I can hear it on the tip of her tongue. <laughs> right. There's no crying in face. Oh, oh my It's a terrible impression. God, take it. Save me. Frogger. Frogger. That's A League of Their Own, and the character was Jimmy Dugan. Very good. That's I too funny. Sarah. Oh. Sarah. Oh. The Sixth Sense. And I do not know Good. the character name. All right, we'll move on. There, but it was Haley Joel Osment. It was the, the the little kid. Yeah, but that's not his character. It was Cole Steer. Oh, okay, cool, cool. All right, two to one. Okay. I'm the king of the world. Um, Frogger. Sarah. Frogger. That's Titanic. I don't remember his last name, but it was Jack. Sarah, you got it. I don't know the last name either. I think Matt got that one. Matt, we'll, we'll give you one point. It's on Titanic. It was Jack Dawson. Yeah, Precious got that point. All righty. Uh, what's in the box? 
Oh, oh. I'll give you a hint. The, 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 the actor that said it was Brad Pitt. Oh. Oh, Sarah. Sarah. I know it. I think I know it. Seven? Seven is correct. Are you right? I never oh, saw that one. Do you remember his name? Yeah, I don't remember oh. his character name, but I remember the oh, horrible. Horrible, horrible scene. Detective David Mills. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're killing me, Smalls. Oh, Frogger. Frogger. That one is Sandlot. Correct. And the character was Ham. The character was Ham. We'll give it to you, Ham Porter. A Ham Porter. All right. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> you make me want to. You make me want to be a better man. Oh. Oh, Anybody? Um, Frogger. Frogger. It's as good as it gets. Correct. <laughs> and, oh, Udall is his last name. We'll give it to you. Udall is correct. What's his first name? Played Maybe. by Jack Nicholson. Good one. Marvin. Marvin. I was going to say Melvin. I was going to say Nelson. Yeah, Marvin Udall. All mm -hmm. right. Great movie. Nope. If you haven't seen nope. As Good As It Gets in a long time, go back and see it. Nobody puts baby in the corner. Sarah. Sarah. Oh, it's dirty the, dancing. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And I think it's like a trick question because the character's name was baby. N no, that's not the one who said it. It was. Oh, um, you you got me. What's Go. his face? Um, Patrick Swayze's character. Whose name is Johnny? Johnny, I did it for Johnny. <laughs> Different movie. I, new, new quote. I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. Sarah. Oh, Sarah. It's Jessica Rabbit from yep. um Toontown. No. <laughs> Wait. Well, I've got it. If you don't, you better. You better take it, Matt. Who framed Roger Rabbit? That's it. <laughs> point. We'll, we'll split the points on those. I did not know the quote, but Jessica Rabbit gave it to me. <laughs> say, say hello to my little friend. Frogger. Frogger. Oh, jeez. Oh, you're going to kill me on this one. It's Scarface. It's Al Pacino's okay. character. Okay. Um, Tony... Fuck. Tony... Montoya... Incorrect. I'm not going to give you that one. It's Tony Montana. <laughs> Tony Montana. That was I, I mispronounced it. Mm. My Spanish is is very shaky. <laughs> Tony. The Big Brother's being picky. <laughs> <laughs> he always did this, Sarah. He's mean to me. They're here. Oh. Oh. Sarah. Sarah. It's Poltergeist. Yes. Correct. I've never seen the movie because I don't do horror movies, so I have no idea the character name. It's a little girl. It's, it's, yeah, it's Carol Freeling. I don't think most people would know that. Tough pull. All right, hands on your buzzers. Last question, Big T. All right, All right Hamilton. Frogger. Frogger. That is Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Jeff Spicoli. That is correct. Don't even come at me with that one. All right, Big T, we do have to wrap it up. Uh, Producer Sari, you, you kind of you had a decent showing coming back there at the end. Precious on the board with one, but uh, I took it again. Nadia, good choice not to play. <laughs> the, Big T, thanks for uh, for stopping by. We also want to thank our guest, Soraya Martinez from the Santa Clarita Public Library. Uh, Diana from College of the Canyons calling in about Discover Day. America's Hottest Young Poet, Nadia Canche from iLead Online Charter School. Again, for more information, iLeadSchools.org. Producer Sarah, Engineer Precious, Big T, and thank you for listening. Remember, life is hard, but we're all here to help each other along. Be well, do good, have a great weekend. Join us again next Friday and every Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. I'm Matt Watson, and this is SCVI and iLead Schools, Eye on the Valley, on your hometown station, KHTS. KHTS.